Welcome friends and fellow amateurs. It is John here and today I want to share with you one of the biggest time-saving features of Fusion 360 that I had to learn when I was making the transition from other 3D modeling softwares. So up until relatively recently, uh, whenever you were going to create a complex assembly out of individual parts, the most common thing to do would be to create your individual parts and then you would import all of those parts into an assembly file and then constrain them all together. That is not the case anymore. And the problem with doing it that way was what if you wanted to create another part and its geometry was based on geometry from your original assembly file. You had to measure distances and spacings in that original assembly file, make sure that it was all right, to go back in create that part from those dimensions that you noted and then import that into your final assembly and see if it fit. And if it didn't fit, then you had to go back, change it, make sure it was right, save it, import it back into the assembly file, try it again. And if it didn't fit, you were just stuck in this infinite loop of trying to come up with a solution uh, for something that really there was, there was a better way to, better way to do it. So what's the trick? Stick around, find out. All right, so I've got my empty Fusion 360 window open right here. Uh, and for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna use a little test block that I built. Uh, this doesn't do anything, it has no particular purpose, but uh, what I wanna do for it is I wanna create uh, like a plate that fits over this surface extends out that can be bolted to this block and normally in previous uh, 3d modeling softwares you would have to uh, get all your dimensions right you'd have to know exactly how big these holes are how far apart they are how far offset from this from this uh, face this hole is right here so that you can get it all lined up right you have to create that part save it import it into your assembly test it, make sure that it fit. If it didn't, you had to go back, fix it again. Fortunately, we don't have to do that here. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a sketch, okay? And I'm just gonna create it on this face right here. All right, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna create my rectangle. About that big is fine. I'm gonna dimension this out so that Dimensions for what we're doing here don't really matter. Okay, so I've got my square. Uh, now I want these, I want these circles too, right? Because I need holes that go through it so that I can bolt the whole thing together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say create, project, and if you've never used the project feature, it's pretty darn handy. You can use it by hitting P or you can go to create, project, include, and click on project. I'm just going to highlight over this circle. I'm going to highlight over this circle and click. I'm going to hit OK. Now I've got two circles you see that show up in purple here. I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm just going to extrude this piece out window, both of them here, and I want this plate to be, let's say, a quarter inch thick. Now, the important thing that we're pointing out here, within this extrude window, there are multiple options. I'm sure you're most mostly familiar with them. The last one right here, operation, where it says join, if we do that, it is going to join this extrusion to the other piece creating a single solid body. We don't want that. We want this to be a new component. So instead of joining, we are going to say new component. All right, we're gonna hit okay. So now you can see we actually have another component and it created one within our window right here. Now this component, we can name other stuff. So we can right click and we can say, oh, where is it? Should be a. Where is it? Drop 
properties. There we go, properties. So we can give it a different part number. We can give it a different part name. We can do all those kinds of things. For what we're doing here, I'm just gonna leave it as component three. Uh, not a, nothing that's, that's not critical for right now. Uh, but uh, I do wanna be able to edit this in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and say save copy as, because you'll notice even after we created that component, it doesn't exist within our project yet. We haven't actually created and saved a new component that we can go back and edit. Um, so I'm gonna say save component as, copy as, and uh, you can give it whatever name you want. I'm gonna leave it as block component three. I'm gonna say save, and there you'll see it just created us a new component. I can open this, there's our component. Pretty nifty, right? We even have a sketch down here that we can right click and we can edit. And we've got all of our features that carried over from uh, what we made in the original project file. I say finish. Looks good to me. I'm just going to resave it. Okay, now the last thing that I want to talk about is you'll see it still says component 3, 1 right here. So what happens if we were to open this and make a change to it? All right, let's say we wanted to take this sketch, edit, and instead of this dimension being 3.9, let's make it 2.5. Save it. Normally, you'd be able to go back over here and you would see that you would have, you know, files that have been saved that needed to be updated. Well, it's not telling us that here because this component is not referenced to this particular file. Okay, so what do we need to do? So instead of this component 3.1 being here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say remove, and I am going to insert my block component three, just as I would have before. You can reposition it if you want to, but if you leave it the same in your sketch, it's gonna pop back up right where you left it. I'm gonna say okay, and look, there's my edited version. Now, if I go back in here and I take this back to, let's make it something drastic so we can see the difference. Let's make it six inches. Finish that sketch. I'm gonna save my file. Now when I go back over here to block, you'll see, get all latest. We've got stuff that's out of date. Let's get the latest. And now we've got an actual updatable part within that assembly. So instead of having to recreate parts based on geometries that you had to figure out, this allows you to actually create your parts within an assembly because there's no such thing as a part file and an assembly file. You just have a design window, you have components, bodies, sketches, surfaces, etc. And it's all treated the same. Pretty awesome, really neat feature, saves a ton of time as you are doing designs. So uh, that's it for today. If you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. You can catch me live, or as I like to call it, uh, learning with an audience, because let's face it, I'm an amateur, but I like to create videos uh, for other people that are experiencing the same issues that I am. Uh, you can catch me live, twitch.tv slash Jilkins, that's J-I-L-K-I-N-S. Uh, I don't have a schedule, but, you know, pop on, give me a follow, and uh, ask me some questions. Happy to help. This is all about learning. We'll see you next time.